Hey, what's up? This is Gary from Raz Rentals. So the Ghostbusters is probably my favorite movie of all time. I watched it hundreds of times when I was a kid. And, you know, since then, I watched it a couple of times each year, much to the delight of my wife. My grandmother will often tell me how she came to visit and gave me this movie as a gift. She went home, and then the next time she came, uh, I had the whole movie memorized. Curse words and all. My parents must have loved it. I was obsessed, and of course, I bought the toys, the cards, the comics, the magazines, the blankets, the pajamas, pretty much everything I could get my hands on. I got it, and what I couldn't, I wanted it, man. I wanted it. And as I got older, my love for the Ghostbusters remained. In the future, toys became more and more detailed. McFarlane toys paved the way for the adult collector. Um, and you know, I wanted to see my favorite franchise get the same treatment that tons of other movies were getting. And then it hit in 2004. NECA started to release Ghostbuster toys for the first time since 1997. Look at that. Ghostbusters, series one. What more could come? Well, nothing. Our enthusiasm was cut short because soon NECA announced, I remember reading it in Toy Fair magazine, that uh, Bill Murray wouldn't sign off in his likeness rights. There would be no movie accurate Ghostbuster toys. At the time, I thought the franchise was cursed. No new cartoon, no more toys. The uh, pretty decent 88 mile per hour studios comic book ended in disaster. If you were one of the unfortunates, I'm sorry if I uh, opened up an old wound. You know, at the time, there were no real Ghostbuster DVDs. I mean, come on. The Ghostbusters was huge in the 80s. And then finally, in 2006, we got these real Ghostbuster DVDs with only four episodes apiece on them. The real Ghostbusters was huge. There's like over, there's like a hundred and some episodes of it. And this is all we got. After all this time, we were in a real drought and it seemed like forever. You know, all my other favorite shows and cartoons were getting these cool uh, box sets and volumes and season sets. And real Ghostbusters was getting nothing for years. And then finally, in 2008, we finally got a DVD box set of the real Ghostbusters. And, you know, it took a long time, but this is probably one of the best cartoon sets in existence. So much nice behind-the-scenes stuff and really good uh, picture quality. Even way better than the new sets that are out now, because this is out of print. The new ones that are out now are not that great. Hump this one down. Things were finally starting to pick up for the Ghostbusters. And then, only a year later, in 2009, the unthinkable happened. It was announced, Ghostbusters, we're finally getting toys. I remember looking at this in Borders Bookstore and thinking like, holy crap, you mean we're going to have Ghostbuster toys of the actual characters in the movie? And Bill Murray's going to sign off in his likeness? That's insane. At the time, Mattel was doing great with their Maddie Collector Masters of the Universe classics line, so they decided to try their shot with the Ghostbusters. The figures were said to be sculpted by the Four Horsemen themselves. But I think uh, in the end, like only some of them were sculpted by the Four Horsemen. And some other parts were done by in-house people inside of Mattel. There's Slimer. The Maddie line ran for seven years technically, but after the third year, the line would only see one to four releases per year. After Mattel lost the license, Diamond Select bought it. And again, we got another line of movie accurate figures. Uh, this line would only last three years, and uh, but we'd get around the same amount of figures, not including the real Ghostbuster toys. During the last year of Diamond's run, it was announced that the Ghostbusters license was sold yet again, this time to Hasbro. So in 11 years, we've had three separate Ghostbuster movie lines. Each line has some highs and each line has some lows. Uh, I'm going to talk about each company, the pros, the cons, and try to figure out who did what the best. Also, I'll talk about why I think these lines haven't caught on as well as some other 80s, you know, franchises. You know, like the Ninja Turtles, the Masters of the Universe, and I think even G.I. Joe is, like, doing extremely well right now. And Ghostbusters kind of remains, uh, okay. You know, there's a lot of reasons I can think of why these things don't sell as well as some others. So I'll try to talk about them a little bit. Also, this series, like, this whole thing is supposed to be a comparison of just the Ghostbuster movie lines. So, you know, I'm sticking with six to seven inch uh, figures. I'm not including the 12 inch Maddie uh, collector figures, and I'm not including the real Ghostbuster Diamond Select toys. You know, I would, eventually I want to talk about the Diamond Select real Ghostbuster toys because I think they're awesome. But, you know, because this is just 
uh, movie figures, I'm going to wait a little bit to talk about them. The Maddie Collector line ran from 2009 until 2016. The figures are 6 inch scale, but I think they're a little shorter than like, you know, like the DC toys and stuff like that. Uh, most of the figures were available online on uh, MaddieCollector.com as exclusives. Uh, new releases came out every other month. At first, the line was first come, first serve, and many of the early figures sold out within the first day or two, but nowhere near as quick as the Masters of the Universe Classics figures. I think San Diego Comic-Con, Slimed Egon, and the uh, regular Peter Venkman figure sold the quickest, as well as the movie props. Uh, movie props are awesome, but I'm not going to talk about them in this video. Uh, figures cost $20 plus shipping. The first figure released was the San Diego Comic-Con Slime Degon in July of 2009, followed by Ray and Winston. In 2010, we got six more figures, but didn't get a regular Peter Venkman until November of 2010, because it took a long time for them to get Bill Murray's uh, approval for the likeness. Um, earlier that year, we did have a slimed Peter Venkman figure, but, you know, the head was not the best, I don't think. Uh, especially with, like, the slime on top of it, the hair. It, it was, it was kind of weird looking. The best year of the line was in 2011. That year, we got eight brand new figures, and the Ghostbusters were put on a subscription plan, so you didn't have to deal with the first-come, first-served nonsense. We also got a 22-inch Stay Puft Marshmallow Man that year. He was made out of foam, and he was pretty cool, but he turns yellow after a while. Things were looking great, and then in 2012, things fizzled out, and we only got four figures that year. Things seemed pretty dead until 2013, whenever Maddie announced that they would hold a pre-order for the Ecto-1. If enough people jumped on board and paid $225, they could make the Ecto-1 we all wanted with lights, sounds, and two Ghostbusters with removable packs. You see, for a while there, um, the original releases of the Ghostbusters, their packs were not removable. So people were asking from the beginning, can you please release them with removable packs? And they finally were, because the Ghostbusters were actually going to fit in the car, which would have been awesome. But unfortunately, Maddie didn't get enough pre-orders, and the dream was over. You know, if you committed to a pre-order, and it was canceled... You were gifted a glow-in-the-dark Slimer action figure. In 2014, we finally did get the Ghostbusters with removable packs in a set of two packs. First you had Peter and Egon, and then you had another two-pack with Winston and Ray. So we finally got the removable packs after five years. But um, these uh, the figures with removable packs were also repackaged again and put out in 2016 when the 2016 movie was released in stores this time. So you could go to your Walmart and pick up Maddie Collector uh, Ghostbusters with removable packs. And they had a Build-A-Figure inside the box too. And then other than that, pretty much the end of the line was really in 2015 when Maddie released a courtroom Egon action figure as a tribute to Harold Ramis. The Diamond Select line ran from 2016 to 2019, and these toys were 7-inch scale now, which is kind of a bummer because you can't mix them with your 6-inch scale Maddie Collector action figures. The majority of the Diamond uh, Select figures were released in waves of three figures, and there were 10 major or 10 main waves. So you had 30 uh, figures altogether from the main wave, and then you had a couple one-offs and some box sets of like variant figures and stuff like that. And instead of having like a build a figure piece, they all came with a build a diorama piece. And uh, waves one through five consisted of characters from Ghostbusters 1. And each one of them came with a piece of the rooftop scene diorama that you can see in the background now. And yes, it's gigantic and it's awesome. And um, waves six through ten consisted of Ghostbusters 2 and real Ghostbuster toys. Uh, specifically, Ghostbusters 2 was 6, 7, and 8, and the real Ghostbusters was 9 and 10. And uh, these final 15 figures uh, each came with a piece to build the front of the firehouse. Now, <clears throat> in order to buy these with the diorama piece, it cost about $24. 
plus, you know, tax or whatever. But um, Diamond also released waves one through seven without the diorama piece. So you could actually get the figures kind of on a standard package, you know, like bubble or whatever, without the diorama piece and for a little cheaper. So I think it was around like 18 to 20 bucks from what I remember. And, um, you know, like I said, they, they also had some other uh, some other toys and box sets and, and whatnot. So, um, you know, and Diamond sold their sets on a larger scale compared to Maddie Collector. You could actually find these in hobby shops and comic stores, and you could buy them on Amazon and in Toys R Us and, you know, all over the place. It was pretty awesome to see Ghostbusters in retail. And, uh, you know, instead of, you know, Maddie kind of slowly died off, but Diamond kind of went out on a high note. Uh, you know, that last two waves of real Ghostbuster action figures really was amazing. Hasbro has only just begun, and already their Ghostbusters Plasma series is off to a pretty good start. It's very much in the same vein as the uh, Power Rangers Lightning Collection and Marvel Legends. The figures are 6-inch scale, but they're shorter than your average 6-inch figure, which makes sense because, you know, they're not superheroes, they're just regular people. And, um... So far in Series 1, or Wave 1, I guess, you have the four Ghostbusters, Dana Barrett, and Gozer. And each one of them came with a, a bath piece, so you could build your own figure. And what was that figure? Well, you could build your own terror dog. Scary. <laughs> you know, and, um, they released these guys on the Hasbro Pulse site, and you could buy them at most retail stores and Amazon. And, you know, they cost just a little under 20 bucks a piece. And um, most recently, Hasbro released on the Hasbro Pulse site Louis Tully's Terrible Night, which was a two-pack consisting of a terror dog and Louis Tully. And so far, no other future items have been announced yet. I kind of don't count the Ecto-1 from Afterlife as a part of the Ghostbusters movie series because, first of all, it's from Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's a different movie. And also because it's not in the same scale as these guys. They can't go in it. Now that we're finally past all that information, let's get down to business. I'm going to compare all these lines the best I can and try to figure out the best each line has to offer. If you're thinking about picking up the old lines or jumping onto the brand new Plasma series, I hope this helps you out. Now, you might think this is a little excessive, but I've split this into 16 categories. That's right, 16. That's a lot, but, you know, I think we got to really break this down here to figure out which is the best movie line of the Ghostbusters. So, these are the 16 categories. Number one, figure count. Number two, packaging. Number three, Egon's likeness. Number four, Ray's likeness. Number five, Winston's likeness. Number six, Peter's likeness. Number seven, Ghostbusters sculpt. Number eight, Ghostbusters paint. Number nine, Ghostbusters articulation. Number 10, proton packs. Number 11, accessories. Number 12, slime blowers. Number 13, side characters. Number 14, small ghosts. That's like, you know, the library ghost, taxi cab, you know, stuff like that. Number 15, big ghosts like Stay Puft, Slimer, the Terror Dogs. Number 16, the major ghosts, the major manifestations, such as, there's only two of them, Gozer and Vigo. So my main focus here is the four guys themselves, but obviously I'm going to have to talk about everything. So if you're ready, let's dive deep into a ton, a ton of information here. Now, I will also mention too that... um. You know, of course, NECA, NECA did have their movie series, but, uh, you know, I can't really cover them too much. They're not really in the running because, you know, they only had four or they only had five releases and they were just ghosts. So, um, you know, they're not a part of the running, but I'm definitely going to talk about them once I get to the ghosts because I think that they had a lot to offer. And now let's begin. Category one, figure count. So obviously, this isn't fair for Hasbro. So far, we've only had one wave from that line. So, you know, there's not too many out there. But 
On the bright side, at least Hasbro has, hasn't given us any variants or repaints yet, so good for them. Um, Mattel and Diamond have had pretty decent numbers, but a ton of them are variants and repaints of the four guys. Well, mostly the three guys with Mattel, but <laughs> we'll uh, get to that. So, Mattel, they released around 40 figures, if you count like the companion ghosts, plus one containment unit. And out of all them, 23 figures are variants and repaints of the Ghostbusters. So that's more than half. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's, that's, that's a lot. So um, Maddie released the Ghostbusters in the regular Ghostbusters 1 uh, suits. And then later on in the line, they released the Ghostbusters in their Ghostbuster 1 suits, but with removable packs. You had three variants. You had Slimed Egon, you had Slimed Peter, you had Marshmallow Mess Ray. They released the four Ghostbusters in their Ghostbusters 2 charcoal uniforms uh, for the We're Back uh, box set. They released Ray and Winston in their Slime Blower outfits, which is, you know, great. Those actually, I, those are a welcome variant. I, I really like the, uh, the Slime Blowers. And then they released... Uh, the three Ghostbusters from Ghostbusters 1 in their We're Ready to Believe You lab coats. And uh, these all had the same exact body, except they had different pocket protectors. And of course, they had the heads of whichever Ghostbuster that, you know, they were supposed to be. And, uh, you know, the heads were all the same, except for Ray. Ray actually has a different head in the lab coat line. And uh, I'm going to talk about his head more when I get to the likenesses, but... The head on the lab coat Ray figure is way better than every other Ray head in the entire line. So when I get there, I'll talk about it more. And um, finally, the Ghostbusters, they released the three Ghostbusters, Egon, Peter, and Ray, in their um, their Ghostbusters 2 courtroom battle scene uh, suits. For side characters, they released four side characters. Uh, three of them came from Ghostbusters 1. There was Lewis as Vince Clortho. There was Dana as Zool. And there was Walter Peck. And the fourth side character that they released wasn't from any of the movies. It was the rookie from the video game. And uh, he was pretty cool, I gotta say. Um, for the major manifestations, or the main boss ghosts, we only got one. We got Vigo. We got three Slimers. And one Stay Puffed. Now, one Slimer came with Slimed Egon. Another Slimer came with Slimed Peter. And the third Slimer came with, uh, came if you ordered, if you pre-ordered the Ecto-1 and, you know, you didn't get it. They gave it to you as a gift. Um, we got two No Ghost symbols. We had a little one that came with, uh, standard Ray stands. And we got a bigger one that, uh, was kind of like a Build-A-Figure that came with, um, the removable pack Ghostbusters that was released in Walmarts. And, uh, from Ghostbusters 1, we had three different ghosts. You had the, the, uh, the library ghost, the taxi cab ghost, and you had the, uh, the subway ghost. And all of those ghosts came with the lab coat figures. So that, to me, was the biggest reason why to get the lab coat figures. Because you got those cool pack-in ghosts. From Ghostbusters 2, you got three ghosts. You got the Cinema Ghost, and he came with uh, Slime Blower Ray. And you got the two Scolari brothers. And one of the Scolari brothers came with uh, Courtroom Peter, and the other one came with Courtroom Ray. And after that, you got the Containment Unit. So here's the thing about the Maddie variants and repaints. You know, a lot of the figures, like the original Ghostbusters, the slime variants, and the removable packs, and, you know, the uh, the Ghostbusters 2, we're, we're back figures, they were pretty much the same exact figure, only repainted, and, and that was it. So, you know, that was kind of a problem, because I think for a lot of people, it felt like you were just kind of buying the same figure over and over again. And, um, you know, when it comes to the lab coat and the courtroom figures, like, I used to own all of them. But eventually I sold them all because I was like, you know, these have been sitting in my boxes forever and, you know, I just haven't put them up on my shelf. So, you know, why should I have them? And um, I will tell you one of the reasons why I have some problems with these guys. I think they're cool. It's a cool idea. 
But um, I think you can't depend too much on variants and repaints for a Ghostbusters line to succeed. I think you have to, um, you know, put out the guys, you know, put them out in their Ghostbusters 1 and Ghostbusters 2 uniforms, put out the slime blowers, but then you really have to heavily focus on ghosts. You need ghosts, you need things for these guys to actually look like, you know, they're trying to catch and battle and all that kind of stuff. And um, when you bought the um, the lab coat figures and the courtroom figures, they pretty much had the same exact body that this courtroom figure Egon has. The biggest difference was they had different coats. And, you know, each one of these guys, Peter, Ray, and Egon, they all used the same bodies, except they had the different coats, depending on if it was a lab coat or the courtroom suit. So that's a bummer. Not only that, but one of the things I really didn't like about these figures was that their scale is way off. Like, I don't know if you can tell, but this Egon is taller than this Egon. And his shoulders are a lot broader. And uh, look at the size of his arms compared to the, uh, the regular Ghostbusters arms. They are so much longer. And some of that, I think, is because Maddie was reusing... I believe that these are the bodies from the DC uh, Universe Classics figures. And they just kind of stuck the, the Ghostbuster heads on them. So they're kind of a little bigger than the regular Ghostbusters. Even like the bottom of his uh, pelvis here is up higher than this one. Um, so, you know, they just kept on reusing the same stuff over and over again. And I think that kind of, you know, left a lot of people in the past. Like a lot of people were getting sick of that, I think. And, you know, after a while, they just stopped buying all these variants from Maddie. On the plus side, when Maddie did give us the slime blower Winston, they at least gave him a new sculpt for his head um, so that he actually looks like Winston in the second movie. When they released the uh, the four pack of the We're Back Ghostbusters, they just took the original Winston figure here and they just didn't paint his mustache. So and then, and they also like made all the the other Ghostbusters have a lot darker um, skin complexion like they all had tans. Diamond released 37 figures and two dioramas. Unlike Maddie, this time Diamond released a lot of the ghosts as their own figure, which is awesome because there was more detail on them. They were bigger. They were articulated. They were great. You know, there's only one figure that I consider a, a pack-in or companion ghost, and uh, I'll get to it when I get to it. Plus, one human as a pack-in human. And... Um, you know, the two dioramas are cool. However, in this line, 19 of the 37 figures are variants and repaints of the four Ghostbusters. So again, more than half of these figures are variants and repaints of the Ghostbusters. Um, so they released the four Ghostbusters in their Ghostbusters 1 gear, and then they released those Ghostbusters again, only now they were slimed. Peter has a new head. It's an awful head, but at least they gave that Peter is something different. Then they released the Ghostbusters 1 figures again in, uh, you know, marshmallow mess figures. And, you know, these didn't come out consecutively. They, like, these sets came out at different points in time. Um, and then they released the four Ghostbusters in their Ghostbusters 2 charcoal wear back uniforms. And at least with that, they actually gave them... Uh, new heads to try to make them look more like the Ghostbusters looked in Ghostbusters 2. So that's, that's you know, a step above what Maddie did with those guys. And then they released the Ghostbusters, well, they released Ray and Winston with their slime blowers, and those were pretty cool. And then they released one variant. They released Ray for, you know, I think it was called Break Time Ray or something like that, where he's got his shirt undone a little bit. And I actually really like that one a lot. That's actually... A nice little touch, even though it is a variant. I, I don't know, I kind of like that one. Altogether, Diamond released seven Ghostbusters side characters. They released four from Ghostbusters 1, and they released three from Ghostbusters 2. Um, from Ghostbusters 1, we got Lewis, Dana, Janine, and Walter Peck. And from Ghostbusters 2, we got Janos and Lewis and his Ghostbusters gear, which was awesome. Not to mention Baby Oscar, who was a packin' baby, and he came with Janos. We got both major manifestations in that line, which is great. We got Gozer, and we got Vigo. 
And you know, that's awesome because when the Maddie line was going on, everybody kept on asking Maddie, like, when are you going to release Gozer? We need a Gozer. When are you going to put out Gozer? And uh, I guess because they didn't have the money for tooling or something like that, they just never got to put Gozer out. Either that or maybe they couldn't get the license rights. I don't know. So, uh, reversed for Maddie, we got one Slimer this time, and we got three Stay Puffs. And the Stay Puffs are, they kind of have the label of the real Ghostbusters line, but Stay Puffed is the same exact design in the real Ghostbusters as he is in the movie. So he can cross over, and in my opinion, Stay Puffed is good for the Ghostbusters movie line. Then we got four ghosts from Ghostbusters 1. We got the Library Ghost, the Taxi Ghost, and both of them are highly detailed and have a lot of articulation, so, you know, they're pretty awesome. You also had a terror dog with uh, changeable horns. So you can either make him Zool or Vince Clortho. And that was great. That was a great idea because recently uh, Hasbro released two of the same terror dog. And I think they're trying to pass them off as Zool and Vince Clortho. And, you know, those horns make a difference, man. They make a difference. And then the final Ghostbusters 1 ghost is just a phantom terror dog. It's the same terror dog... Only now he's gray and he's got like, you know, see-through plastic. Now, we only got one Ghostbusters 2 ghost, and this is the ghost that I consider a pack-in or companion ghost. It's just a severed head on a stick, you know, from whenever they were walking around in the on the subway tracks. I mean, you can count that as a ghost, whatever. I count it as a ghost because, you know, that part was pretty cool in the movie. So, and then you had the two dioramas. You had the rooftop scene. And you had the uh, the front of the firehouse. As you can see here, uh, like I said, they released in when they released the Ghostbuster two figures. And I'll, I'm going to get into this a little further once I get get to the likeness part. But they did actually make an attempt to give you know each Ghostbuster a different head to make them look more like they did in Ghostbusters two. So here's Hasbro, and so far they're doing pretty great. But I bet you any money. This year, when they put out Wave 2, I bet you we will get four variants of the Ghostbusters plus two other characters. It's going to happen. I just know it's going to happen. You know, they'll, they'll either put out Ghostbusters 2 um, uniforms or some other variant of the Ghostbusters. But we're getting variants. It's coming. I know it. And uh, so, so far, they have the four Ghostbusters. You have Dana and Lewis. You have Gozer. And you have a terror dog. And, you know, uh, it's only one terror dog because he's got, he doesn't have the different horns. But um, my guess, and I would put money down on this, but I'm not a betting man, so I'm not going to bet any money. But like I said, I think we're going to get four Ghostbusters. We'll get them in their Ghostbusters 2 uniforms. And then we'll get Janine and we'll get Lewis again because the Lewis figure that came out already was a convention exclusive so i think that they will release lewis in a standalone pack that's my guess uh come back and tell me if i'm right or wrong when they announce wave two all right so here's how i break down this whole uh figure count and variant thing as you can see here these are all the variants i have of ray um i used to pretty much have them all except for the slimed and marshmallow variants from Diamond Selects line because I just thought that they uh, were kind of a waste of money. <laughs> like I couldn't, I couldn't bite onto those ones. You know, I, I couldn't get them. But I did have Marshmallow Mess Ray, uh, and I sold it. Why? Because it just it looks silly. First of all, how come they can never make the marshmallow figures look right? Like they can never just make them like look goopy and completely covered in marshmallow like the movie. Like when I watch the movie and I see them covered in marshmallow, I'm like, that looks awesome. Like. That just makes me want to go out and eat marshmallows. But whenever I look at the marshmallow mess figures that Mattel and Diamond have put out, you know, it just looks like, you know, birds have been taking craps on them. So, you know, Maddie drowned their line with uh, too many Ghostbuster figures, you know. That was one of the biggest reasons why Maddie, you know, I think had their downfall and people lost interest. They just kept on pumping out the same figures. And, you know, it's... You know, kind of a shame because at the same time, they kept on selling us the same thing over and over and over again. And people were like, we need different things. We want this. We want this. But, you know, their excuse was always, 
well, we can get to that, but you have to buy all these variants first so that we can have the money to pay for tooling so that we can make these other characters and stuff like that. So, you know, me, I was like, okay, well, all right, you know, I'll buy this stuff. You know, some of this stuff is cool. Like the lab coats, they have their extra ghosts and stuff like that. You know, I'll buy into that. But when you get to the end of it, you're just kind of like, uh, you know, it, do it doesn't amount to much, especially after a line ends. Like when a line ends and you can look at the whole thing and you can decide like, all right, well, like, you know, there's nothing else to add to this line. Do I really need to have this line complete? And for me, with the Maddie figures, it was like, no, you don't need to have this line complete anymore. And, you know, some of these, like, as I was uh, planning out these videos, I was also thinking, like, well, you know, maybe I should go back and I should, like, buy some more of these figures. So I went and I bought the courtroom Egon figure. And, you know, just having that figure in hand... Uh, after selling it and now getting it back again, my uh, general feeling again is like, I probably could use that $25 for uh, something else. <laughs> so, but you know, that's how it is. And you know, like the biggest complaint that people have with Maddie is that, you know, they never released Gozer and they never released Janine. They just couldn't get to them because they kept on saying, oh, we'll get to them when we have enough money, but they could never get to them. And uh, Diamond released their variants too, but uh, you only needed two of them to build to finish your rooftop diorama. You had to buy the the break time Ray, and you had to buy the slimed Peter. And you know that kind of stinks because the slimed Peter was not the greatest thing in the world. But I I did like the the Ray variant, and um, you know most of the other variants were uh, either. Their suits from Ghostbusters 2, which is fine. I think that's an acceptable variant. Or um, they were in box sets or like exclusives. You could buy them elsewhere. You didn't have to get them in the main line. Like the, the other slimed Ghostbusters and the Marshmallow Ghostbusters, you didn't need them in order to finish your diorama or anything like that. And Diamond succeeded where Mattel failed because they were able to release Janine and Gozer. And... Um, you know, Diamond released a lot of their ghosts in better quality, too. Like, they had more articulation. They were more detailed. And uh, they released the Terror Dogs. Like, Mattel could never get to the Terror Dogs, either. That just didn't show up. And then, also, on top of that, they also released Lewis in Ghostbusters 2 gear. And, you know... That's also awesome. That's something like everybody always wanted, I think, too, with the Maddie line that we just couldn't get. So since they gave us Gozer and they gave us the Terror Dogs and Janine and they gave us Lewis in his Ghostbusters 2 uniform and, you know, the variants weren't anywhere near as necessary to the line as they were with Maddie. Like with Maddie, you kind of felt like you had to buy them to keep it going, especially if you had a subscription plan. Then you that meant you just had to buy them and you like you were stuck. But, you know, with Diamond, you could kind of pick and choose what you wanted. Um, so, figure count goes to Diamond Select. They won figure count. <whistles> and now that we're done with figure count, now it's on to the next category. Category two, packaging. Now, each line has a very specific look and feel. Um, they all do a really good job of capturing the theme of the Ghostbusters, but one is clearly better than the other two. Now let's take a look at all of them and figure out which one it is. The Maddie covers shipped in these white mailers or uh, slip covers. And you know, on the front it tells you the brand, obviously Ghostbusters, and it tells you which figure is hiding inside. On the bottom it has some consumer information, but other than that, it's just all white. When you remove the slip cover, inside you found your figure uh, packaged in this amazing box. Now, I really like this because the bubble is really big, and uh, you can clearly see the character from three sides here. And, you know, imagine if they were in here, it would look very, very clear and very nice. <laughs> so, um, the bubble kind of reminds me of the shape a little bit of, like, the building from the Ghostbusters, Dana Barrett's apartment building. And on top, you had the, uh, the Ghostbusters 1 No Ghost logo. Now, if you had a Ghostbusters 2 figure like Vigo or the Slime Blower guys you had the Ghostbusters 2 logo on top. On the sides of the bubble, you have uh, two terror dogs, and they do a really good job of, 
you know, just carrying that theme and framing your guy in there very nice. On the bottom, you have who the character is and some consumer information on the bottom. Now, the picture in the background is a picture of Stay Puft reaching out with his hand while he's being blasted by a proton stream. And this package is special because this is the one that came with the first figure, the slimed Egon action figure. And originally, Maddie was planning on releasing all these figures in these, like, um, open and closed, you know, packages where you could open them up, take your guy out, and then if you wanted to uh, put him back in and hang him up on your wall or something like that, you could because the bubble is kept on here with these tabs and these little pieces of tape. But, like, and, and like, this was great. Everybody thought this was what we're going to get for the whole line. But after the first Egon figure, they started just gluing the bubble to the card. And when you would pull this off of the card, it would just rip the crap out of it. This is what I'm talking about. But I got smart eventually. And I started using an X-Acto knife and I would cut around the bubble so I could try to get a very nice clean looking picture of a Stay Puft here getting blasted. As if the front wasn't cool enough, the back of the, uh, the cards are just awesome. First of all, you have a picture of a very cluttered desk and it has little notes and details. It's got some Chinese food, it's got a marshmallow, you know, a bunch of cool little nods to the Ghostbuster stuff. And then in the middle here, you have a little folder and you have a picture of the character from the movie. And then it says the name of the character, their profession, Ghostbuster status, quotable quotes, habits, hobbies, accomplishments, notes, you know, he's Egon. He collects spores, molds, and fungus. You know, it, it just has a lot of nice nods to the, to the movie. It has, like, some extra jokes. And, you know, even though a long time ago I got rid of all the, uh, the boxes and packaging for all these, I used to have them all, plus the slipcovers, just, like, sitting in a box in my basement. You know, I couldn't get rid of all these awesome cards because there was just too much good information on them. They even have one for the rookie. But, uh... On his, on his, let's see if I can find it real quick. There you go. He's got like no real photo because the rookie's supposed to be you, man. While most of the Maddie figures came in white uh, mailers, we got one that was way cool. And we got this uh, one for Zool or the Dana Barrett figure. And, you know, it's painted to look like the doorway on top of her building. And it's just really cool looking. And uh, the colors are nice and vibrant. And it's very purpley and very nice looking. Even though I got rid of most of my Maddie packaging, uh, except for those, few, those two boxes, uh, I kept a bunch of these terror dogs because, you know, they just look awesome. I like these things a lot. And you could do whatever you want with them. You could hang them up on your wall. You could put them in your office. You could put them on your desk. You can stick them all over your wife's vanity mirror. Up next, we have Diamond Select. Now, if you're familiar with any Diamond Select toy, you will recognize that this looks just like every other Diamond Select toy packaging. You kind of have the little cardboard front here where you have the, the name of the series. You have a very big bubble. So you can see the character inside very easily and nicely. You know, this is one that came with a diorama, so you have that in the background. If you bought these figures without the diorama, it would be set up more like a regular carded figure. Where the, um, you know, you just have the card in the back and you have a bubble on the front. And it doesn't have these, you know, extra cardboard pieces on the, the front and the side. Now, just like every other Diamond Select toy... The um, the side, or the, like the bookend side, has a picture of the character. And, you know, these are really nice. You know, and the first series that covered the Ghostbusters 1 toys all had pictures of the characters from the movie. You know, like I got these ghosts. And they're all pictures from the movie. Later on, when they had the Ghostbusters 2 and Ghostbuster, real Ghostbusters toys, they just put pictures of the action figures, which... Come on, isn't as cool, you know. But, uh, you know, this car this does capture the theme of the Ghostbusters in that you have a lot of, like, energy or, like, little, like lights. You have a very uh, strong, like, green lights coming from the center of the card. 
you know, this is very bright green and looks almost kind of like splatters of slime in here. On the back, there's a biography for the character. You have a picture of the character, or the, I mean the toy, and you have a little picture of the diorama all put together. And boy, does that look cool. And, um, you know, you also have pictures of the two other characters from this series. And each series was broken into three characters, so one, two, three. On the bottom, you have the four guys shooting their proton packs up into this spectacular light show. Um, you know, like, it it does look Ghostbuster-y, like, in that it's green. And, you know, you got Slimer and Slime and... Uh, but, like, it, um, it, it looks really nice. But, in my opinion, it just kind of looks more of, like, a Diamond Select toy so like in in that way it's like not it, it's it's specific to ghostbusters it has the theme but it's not anything specially ghostbusters i guess is my opinion on it finally we got hasbro's packaging now if you're familiar with any marvel legends or power ranger toys you're going to recognize that this looks pretty much just like every other <laughs> hasbro packaging too um you know it looks nice it definitely has the Ghostbusters theme. Like, you definitely look at this and you're like, yes, this is Ghostbusters. Because, you know, it says Ghostbusters. And one of the coolest things is that the Ghostbusters title here looks like stitched letters, which is really nice. Because the whole, the whole idea is it's supposed to be kind of like the Ghostbusters suit that you're looking at, you know. Um, and, you know, this logo here, it looks like a patch. It has a nice texture on it and it has little stitch lines on it. And this Vinkman um, patch looks really nice. It looks three-dimensional. It, it looks nice. My only problem is that um, the beige jumpsuits is not, like, the most exciting thing for me. I mean, it's beige. It's not like... I don't know. It's called the Plasma Series. You'd think that... <laughs> you'd think that it would be more like, um, you know, like bright colors. Like something. On the side, you just have little black and white drawings of the proton pack and what's really cool is inside of this window in the background you do have like a black background and there are pictures drawn in red of the proton pack and on the bottom there's a nice picture of the ecto-1 and inside the window of course you got your guy in here you have the special accessory comes with um, the proton pack and the bath piece Now, on the back, it looks like pretty much every Marvel Legends or uh, uh, most of the Hasbro lines where you have the picture of the bath and it tells you what the numbers are for each piece. And over here, it breaks down which number goes to which action figure. So you got Pete Vinkman. He's got number one. He's got this, uh, what is it, like the left claw, his left claw, you know. So that's how that goes. And you have a nice little biography at the top, Peter Vinkman. The man with the mouth. Peter can convince almost anybody of almost anything. That's, a, that's something. <laughs> if, what's uh, kind of interesting is the, uh, the pictures here of each guy is not a picture of the action figure. They are actually the pictures of the 3D models they made to make these action figures. And in some ways, the faces are a lot clearer than you get on the actual, you know, sculpted final action figures and just to uh cement my point here here's a picture of a marvel legends action figure and as you can see you got the same thing going on here you got the bath you got the numbers you got each character bio you know it's the same exact setup now one of the nicest things about this ghostbusters package is this awesome picture of the guys you know, it's just a nice, simple look. And, you know, it, it's like, you know, it looks like a real piece of artwork. It looks like something you'd want to hang up on your wall. Here's a close-up of the back so you can see the, uh, the 3D models next to the final figures. And, like, you can pretty much make out every detail in the 3D models that showed up on these final action figures. Like, there is a little bit of a difference here with uh, Murray's head. It looks like they kind of made it a little wider or... <laughs> bigger or something on the uh, final release they were close very close 
Now the NECA toys are not in the running, but as a nice bonus, here's what the NECA packaging look like. Um, the NECA figures came in clamshells, kind of like the original Marvel Legends by Toy Biz, where it was just like a big plastic shell surrounding the figure and the uh, the card in the back. So, you know, you'd look through the the front here and you got this picture of Gozer and on the one side you have a picture of Gozer. And then on the back, you could see all of the other figures from the line and it has a nice little biography here. Look at this, Series 1. <sighs> if only we could have got Series 2. What's also really cool is uh, you can actually open this up and you get even more pictures. These head knockers, headlights, and some nice pictures of these Series 1 action figures. Hasbro and Diamond do a really good job of capturing the theme and look of the Ghostbusters, but they just cannot beat the Maddie box. I mean, this is amazing. Like, this actually seems like it was made by people who cared about Ghostbusters, who really, really wanted to do something special for the line. And, you know, all this extra details on the back, you know, they were really trying to appeal to hardcore ghost heads. And, you know, they totally got me. Like, I love this packaging, and now every other package for any Ghostbusters toy, I will always compare it to this one. Category 2 goes to Matty Collector. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, let me know what you think. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comments below. We still got a long way to go. We're only through the first two categories. And, uh, you know, hopefully this doesn't take too much longer. I'm anticipating this is a three-part series at least. Hopefully not four. Hopefully I can get through this stuff uh, quicker than that. But, you know, you know, you might think this is a little long, but that's the whole point. The whole point is to be excessive and to kind of go into detail about all these different things. Because sometimes a 30-second comparison just isn't enough. And, uh, you know, <sighs> right now we're at a tie. Diamond Select's got one, and Maddie Collector's got one, and the suspense is killing me, man. It's killing me. So, uh, you know, it shouldn't be too long. I'll be back with part two, and we can go over all the Ghostbusters likeness, the sculpts, and articulation, and the paint. See you soon.